It's time for Talking Tauntaun! Your Star Wars source at AIPTcomics.com Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Talking Tauntauns, the official Star Wars podcast for AIPTcomics.com. I am JJ Travers and I'm joined this morning as always by Nicole Herview and Jim Lehane. First, I uh, just want to say thank you to all of our patrons who help make this show possible. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash AIPTcomics. You can hang out with us on Discord and join our book club. Now that the pleasantries for Patreon are out of the way, Nicole, Jim, good morning and happy 4th of July. Yo, happy 4th of July, my friend. Uh, do, you, do you know how many countries celebrate the 4th of July? I think it's just the one. No, they all do. It's 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 just a day on the calendar. <laughs> Fair enough. I guessed six. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to say that for one of the first years in a really really long time, I'm not doing anything today. We're going to cook and grill in our tiny little backyard, if you can call it that, and. Uh, Hang out with each other. And I'm stoked about it. Yeah, I'm doing nothing as well, and I am the happiest person. Just thrilled. Yeah, we are going to cook and grill in our tiny backyard as well. Oh, Love tiny. That. Yeah. yeah t- <laughs> <laughs> Tell them how many acres you have. Go ahead. Oh. Well, I can't see the back of my backyard. It's uh, it's 60 acres. It's, I, I haven't been to the end yet. <laughs> Everything the light touches is Jim's kingdom. I have actually said that. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. Simba. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so now that we're past Jim's giant backyard, we had some mailbag to talk. Yeah, we do. What's this? Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Wait a minute, where'd she go? Bring her back. Play back the entire message. What message? <laughs> the one you've just been playing. Uh, so one of our uh, lovely patrons, Annis123, had a question for us uh, referring to our Bad Batch episode. Uh, so the message we got is, and thank you for the message, Annis, just listen to the latest episode discussing uh, discussing the Bad Batch. Jim or JJ, the next time you guys discuss the Bad Batch, I was wondering if you get Nicole's take on Trace and Rafa in the Bad Batch because she hasn't seen Season 7 of Clone Wars yet. They really dropped Tra- Trace and Rafa into that episode without much explanation, if I recall correctly. You are correct, since most of us are familiar with the characters already. It was a complaint I heard of that episode, and I was curious if Nicole felt that way. Yeah, so, yes... It felt like, uh, who the hell are these people, and 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 why are they important, and why should I care? Um, but Star Wars has a really lovely way of, you know, winking at the audience when it's like you're supposed to know who this person is. So I immediately knew, like, okay, I'm supposed to know who they are. I just don't. So I looked them up. So then I got the context, you know, um, and I was like, oh, okay. So these are, you know, Clone Wars season seven people. I don't know what's going on and that's okay, <laughs> you know? Um, so it didn't bother me that much, but I was still like, I felt like I was on the outside of something, which I hate. Um, and I was just like, okay, I'm going to pretend I should care about these people. You know what I mean? Like, and that was it. And I enjoyed them. I didn't, you know, but again, like I don't have a lot of context to pull from. I was just like, these seem like interesting characters, and I, I'm excited to see more of them. And that was all I had, you know? I, I feel like the Filoni-verse um, does this repeatedly. Mm-hmm. Like, Ahsoka's drop... <laughs> the Filoni-verse. The, yeah, Ahsoka's drop in The Mandalorian, I think, was the same thing. Like, clearly, like, anybody who uh, knows who Ahsoka is, like, clearly was excited to see her in live action... Mm-hmm. But then you get all those people who are like just watching the live action stuff, don't have any context of the cartoons, and they're like, "Who is this person? Why is she important? And where did she come from?" Like, right. it, it seems like she has more importance to play than just here. But I don't recognize her. Right. It's like I know I should care, but why? Yeah. You know. Um. I I'm not gonna weigh in on this. I feel like I've made my <laughs> feelings on Trace and Rafa very clear. You definitely have. 
Uh, so thank you so much for uh, the message. And if anyone else has something they want to shoot into our mailbag, we, we love this type of stuff. So please do. You can uh, hit us up on Twitter at Talking Tauntauns. You can also get us through email, TalkingTauntauns at AIPTComics.com. So thank you very much, Ennis. Um, we have some news this morning. Your Tauntaun will freeze before you reach the first marker. Then I'll see you in hell. Hello, what have we here? couple of pieces one oh is there news it's been blowing up the freaking uh internet yeah i was about to say i'm very excited about that one i think we should leave that one for last and talk about no, the other that's two not first. the one i'm talking about this is bad this is the first the first one on the list is the, oh the see one that's... okay all right yeah so uh we'll talk about this <laughs> y'all have um, a, a language that i'm like which one <laughs> 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 i'm like when you guys know exactly what you're talking about and i'm like Context. Gentlemen. I've been doing this Context. with Jim for exactly. for a few years. Exactly. <laughs> so so now, okay. like, <laughs> yeah, we'll get to the point where uh, you and I and Jim were all saying, "So that, oh yeah, that one." That okay. Thing. So uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just give yeah, it, you know, it. give it like this a few one. more months. Mm-hmm. Not this one. This one. <laughs> I'm there. So, I got you. Uh, yeah. So I get why there's controversy about this um, because people are stupid. Um, I'm just going to throw that out there right away. So here it is. Uh, So Disney renamed Boba Fett's spaceship. Hold on. I'm going to go with allegedly. Just let let me, I'll I'll get it out there and then you can. (laughs) Okay. So what I was going to say is they announced, uh, excuse me, they changed the name with the latest Lego set for Boba Fett's ship. And it is a Lego set. Uh, it's 593 pieces. It's um, the ship that we've always known as Slave One. But on the box, it says Boba Fett's Starship. And it has Boba Fett and Mando. Uh, and it's the iconic ship that everyone knows from Empire Strikes Back and the prequels. Uh, it's very firmly ingrained in most Star Wars fans' minds. So uh, th- there's been nothing official from disney or from star wars um story you know this this lucasfilm story group to say like yes this is a definitive change but they're renaming it on um a lego box which i mean why wouldn't you call it its name there if you aren't changing it i think is the logic here but this isn't the only thing that lego has called generic or the person's generic starship or person's generic thing because they are trying to market to a massive crowd most people don't know what this ship is called has it ever been called slave one in the movies or even the mandalorian or the tv show i don't recall it ever being mentioned and so what would you market this ship towards if you want to get to a wider audience right it's a boot like Yes, a lot of people are going to know what it is just by the looks, but if you call it Boba Fett Starship, people know who Boba Fett is. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, they could have done Boba Fett Slave One, but again, it's kind of more of a generic marketing term. Right. That That's very uh, true, and it's a very good point. I guess where I'm, I'm coming from on this is they should rename it, and people that are upset about this are idiots because... Um, Maybe, you know, if you aren't a person of color, this terminology doesn't bother you. But um, if your heritage um, and your people were enslaved, then I think you might have a very different opinion on that. And this is not something that's new by any means. I work uh, my nine to five is I work in technology and uh, master slave is something that has been used um in technology for a very long time for a number of things with uh, DNS, especially um, with networking. It's used with uh, Python, which is one of the most popular programming languages in the world. It's been changed in Python. Adobe changed it with their services. GitHub has changed it. Uh, The HDMI, HDMI protocol has changed it. A lot of people have made this change, Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's not hard to do, and it's really not. It shouldn't be a big deal at all. It's you're you're getting rid of a offensive term that represents a horrible point in human history, and replacing it something with does not represent 
a horrible point in human history with the suffering of, you know, countless people. Uh, so to be upset if Disney is renaming his ship to something else, like, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Truly. No, JJ, I couldn't have said it better myself, first of all. And second of all, all of the, like, dissent and anger I've seen about this has been people bending over backwards with the weirdest logic I've ever seen in my life to try to, like, justify why it shouldn't be changed. And I'm sitting here like... What, truly why does it bother you so much like truly what is wrong with you like it's I just can't I can't wrap my head around it you know and it's just a bunch of white people which I am one <laughs> honestly being like well this is why it's called that and did it and I'm like no shut up <laughs> just take a step back for two seconds it doesn't matter what the intention is this is something that I've said on a lot of these, you know, issues. It does not matter what the logic or the intention is. If the end product is upsetting or wrong to certain people, then it's upsetting and wrong, period. And if you give two craps, you change it. It's that simple. It doesn't matter what your intention is. It doesn't matter what the logic is. If it's wrong, it's wrong. So fix it. And if and that's what Disney's doing, great. And it's not like they're getting rid of the word slave out of Star Wars. Anakin was a slave. They're not getting rid of that. They are getting rid of the willy nilly use of the like the, the just throwing the word out there like it doesn't mean anything. And so that is what they are getting rid of. Similar with all the, the programs that JJ listed. They're getting rid of it as a just a generic term that doesn't mean anything when it does have the baggage. They're not getting rid of the term itself and the baggage that it comes with where clearly that is the point of having it with Anakin, where it's with a starship, it doesn't really have any point. There's no reason to like keep that name. And yeah, so I don't know where the name came from, and I've been reading this like this stuff for decades. So mm -hmm. I'm 100% fine with changing the name. Like it, I have no um, emotional baggage tied to the name of Boba Fett Starship. And it's it's not like this change not that this would even matter if it did but it's not like this change even impacts anything not really not it's at all <laughs> it's a ship and as you said jim uh the vast majority of people don't even know the name of it they'd be like oh that's a ship from star wars or oh yeah that's boba fett's ship right. um you know i i'm a diehard fan i can't think of if disney changed it today when i woke up tomorrow that star wars would be um lessened by this in any way it would be an improvement we're, we're removing something that is not <laughs> like nomenclature that we should be using for anything i mean it's why we're yeah. seeing you know uh major sports teams having to change their names which is long overdue and it's a good thing like mm -hmm. we're better people than this for sure and it just highlights i think how you know as you know white people sometimes we need to shut the hell up listen and take a step back and like actively like listen to what you know communities of color are telling us and explaining to us very patiently with patience they shouldn't need to exhibit but they do um and it's like even something this small is a fight and i can't fathom it i just can't, like we really can't sometimes take a back seat and it's ups it's so upsetting and this is a general comment but it's just like come on this is a small one and we can't even, like, not fight this. Some people just can't shut their mouths. They just can't open their ears. It's very upsetting to me. I think it comes down to one main point. You don't own Star Wars. Lucasfilm mm. and Disney own Star Wars. They can do whatever they want. So get over yourself. Yeah, that too. Absolutely. All right. Moving on. Uh, we have... A new writer named for Patty, Jinx, Patty Jenkins' Rogue Squadron. Uh, so this is going to be the first Star Wars film since The Rise of Skywalker. If you're not familiar with uh, Patty Jenkins, she has directed um, most recently the uh, Wonder Woman films for uh, DC and Warner Brothers. So Matthew Robinson uh, co-wrote and co-directed The Invention of Lying. I have no idea what that is. Uh, apparently, he did that with Ricky Gervais. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that film. Nope. Um, I've heard of it, and that's about it. 
<laughs> yep. I believe it exists as a movie in the movie universe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it's supposedly going to go into pre pre production, um, fall next year, and then it'll be released on December 22nd, 2023. So we still got a while. Did, did we have an official release date before? I think so. Okay. I don't remember it. I, I, I just noticed that as, uh, they, they, um, went back to December and they said, yeah, I guess we'll stick with December because that last May one didn't do so hot. Mm. <laughs> Oops. Big oop. Yeah. I guess he also wrote um, and worked on Love and Monsters, which I don't know, but I do know Edge of Tomorrow, which mm-hmm. I enjoyed. Um, which they changed the name of, so you know the marketing was great. Live, die, repeat, and repeat. <laughs> No, that's the second. That's the that's the that's new a sequel. sequel. Excuse yeah. me. Live, die, repeat was yeah. Edge of Tomorrow was the one where nobody went anything, right. and um, all you need is kill is what it's based off of. Yeah, the manga, right? So, uh, yeah. so for the love of God, someone pick a name. But yeah, so he did the sequel. I don't think he did the original. I think he did the sequel, which hasn't come out yet. Right. So I was looking at his IMDb, and I was like, okay, half of this hasn't come out, and the other half. I somewhat knew about or like missed or uh, so I have no opinion on this you know what I mean like I've known this dude's name but I have no idea what like I haven't seen any of his work so I have no opinion really it'll be like the Game of Thrones guys all over again mm. like let's get those guys on here and then the last season of Game of Thrones comes out and goes so oh, that was a mistake <laughs> horrible horrible mistake they'll, ne- they'll never what? escape that and for what <laughs> All right, uh, gaming news. New expansion for Star Wars The Old Republic. So if you're not familiar with this, uh, it has been out for a while now, I think. Yeah, they are celebrating their 10th anniversary with this expansion release. And I played The Old Republic when it first came out, um, but it takes so much time. I don't have that time. I want to play a game and beat it. They're still releasing expansions, expanding the story, which tells me I will never be able to play this game and beat it. <laughs> I, I I still play World of Warcraft, and it's a very similar situation. Have except that's been yet? out since uh, <laughs> that's been out since like 2005. <laughs> World of Warcraft yeah. came out in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. This this game has I mean it's uh, a free to play MMO. Uh, it's still it's still chugging along. The new mm-hmm. expansion is um, Legacy of the Sith. So if you're not familiar with this game, it's a Star Wars MMO. If you play World of Warcraft, think the same basic concepts. There's classes, there's factions, uh, and you can travel around the galaxy and become a Jedi and a bounty hunter, a soldier. Uh, It's pretty standard Star Wars MMO affair, but it's still pretty popular. uh, And as I said, free to play. I have a couple of people that I play WoW with um, that have played this or still play it uh, and enjoy it. It's not for me. I can only handle one MMO at a time. I I really enjoyed it when I played it. I got up to level 14 and that was when I was actually paying to play. And so it was, I bought the um, collector's edition box, which um was about uh like a foot and a half across by like a foot and a half high it was a huge box that came in the mail and it came with a darth malgus statue and everything oh cool do you have that handy yeah it's um over there (laughs) oh man darth malgus for those of you who are not familiar is this like super um powerful sith lord who there's comics and books that you can get about this mmo and these these characters are all uh legends material at this point uh but it's still really cool they have basically made films out of yeah there he is look at that guy how cool that's dope um they have basically made like mini films out of all the cinematics that have come out for this game over the years and if you haven't uh sat down and watched them uh it's it's very much worth the time they're amazing cinematics Highly recommend it. You can find them on YouTube in like two seconds if you just search for Star Wars The Old Republic cinematics, and they're really, really cool. Agreed. It's a, it, 
it's a, a instead of taking all the time play the game it's just a quick kind of snippet into it like the the sacking of the jedi temple um with darth malgus is probably the best one yeah and that's really and it's cool. easily it's just they're just fun little cinematics it was kind of when they came out it was the same time that the um like the clone wars was kind of in the middle of its uh in the middle of its run and people are like, why, why doesn't the clone wars kind of do something like this? Cause clone wars was, um, before that season three kind of, uh, jump where they got a lot better, honestly. But, uh, people are comparing the two, even though they're two completely different things. All right. Now we're going to talk about the piece of news that I am most excited to discuss, uh, which dropped yesterday. So, Star Wars Visions. We we knew about this um, back at Disney Investor Day. Uh, we didn't know much about it at all. It, it was like one of the logos on the screen, and they might have said something quick about it. Um, and that was it. It was announced last December, and since then we haven't seen or heard a peep. Uh, well, yesterday they dropped the trailer for it, a special first look, and oh my god. This looks incredible. You guys have both both seen this, yes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, they also re- uh, released a release date, which is a lot sooner than anybody was expecting. Did they release a specific date? Because I just saw September. Yeah. Was it? September, this- September 22nd. Oh, buddy. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, so. Oh, that's great. We have our episode planned for, uh... oh, no. You're not going to be here. We're going to talk here. about no. it without you. <laughs> Sorry, bro. No. Maybe you shouldn't get married. Ugh. <laughs> Don't say that, Jim. Can I no, record get married. from Hawaii? <laughs> no, I don't think you oh, can. Oh, that's honeymoon time? Yeah. What's the date of that recording? Uh, What's so the, the this epi- This will drop on the 22nd, and our recording is on the 26th. I will still be here. I will. I will be there for this one. Damn it! Ha-ha! <laughs> oh, I'm so sad to be missing this. Maybe we record a day or two early. Maybe. 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 We'll we'll see what we can do for you. I'll consider it. All right. Mr. So <laughs> I guess we should explain. Uh, I'm sorry. I can't record. I'm in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> they have the internet in Hawaii. There. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we should probably explain what this is since we've yeah, been like. Probably. We've been like uh, ooing and eyeing over it, but we haven't actually explained what it is. So, uh, Star Wars Visions is an anime anthology series of nine short films that is directed by a bunch of different creators uh, and features some really highly regarded and impressive uh, studios from um, mainly, I believe, Korea and Japan. I haven't confirmed all of that. Um, but I think, yeah, let me just quick spot check here. Actually, so far, they're all Japan. I, I had thought they were all Japanese, but I yeah. did, you're right. I haven't looked the, that closely into the creators. I'm not that familiar with um, anime creators to be able to um, the state where they're specifically from. Yeah, yeah me so neither. I just spot checked eight of them, and they're all from Japan. Um, so, yeah, this is an anthology series that... When I watched the trailer, Jim, you said this to me, and you were spot on with it. The first thing I thought was, okay, Animatrix. That's exactly mm. the feeling you get. You get the Animatrix was an basically an anime style cartoon series set within the Matrix universe, and you had a bunch of short cartoons. Um, kind of didn't really even tie together. They were just kind of their own thing. And they were super awesome. I, I really love them. as some of the better um, Matrix content that was put out there. And then, like, you have this thing. You have nine uh, cartoons, uh, anime um, li- uh, shorts, that are, I'm assuming, all going to be released on the same day. And they have nothing to do with each other. The, the, all the, the studios are doing their own thing. And they can do whatever they want. And so it's uh, definitely... the, the I can't imagine that the Animatrix was not brought up when discussing this uh, this series. There's no way it wasn't a, a influence. It's so clear from watching so- some of these clips too. Like it, it had to have been a heavy influence on this project. Um, yeah. So we have 
the names of them. It uh, so the um, let me see one two three. So we have seven of the titles named. Uh, so the duel, Lop and Ocho, Tatooine Rhapsody, the Twins and the Elder, the Village Bride, Akiri and T Zero B One, and the Ninth Jedi. That's all. That's all nine. Um, the Twins and the Elder are two separate shorts from what uh, oh, the, okay. the Star Wars portion. And then Akiri and T Zero B One are two separate. Uh, they're just by the same studio. Got it. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the, the Ninth Jedi is by the team that did Ghost in the Shell, one of the greatest anime films of all time. Uh, That's awesome. The, the Twins and the Elder is from Kill a Kill, also very highly regarded. Uh, Batman Ninja, which is a, um anime film from DC and Warner Brothers. If you haven't seen it, it's awesome. They're doing the duel. So there's a lot of talent um, that's working on this. And from the trailer, it... Again, uh, I got a lot of like uh, Animatrix feel, but also like Love and Robots from Netflix. Like it, it looks like they're doing the full gambit. Like, and they're even talking about it in the trailer. All the creators, you have like serious stuff. We're seeing like um, you know Jedi and Sith or Dark Side users dueling, but then there's like really cute and wholesome like droids, and like the style of anime is like like the full spectrum. It just looks so good. Yeah, it seems really representative of a- anime. Like, th- I know that seems like a silly thing to say, but like, anime is a style, not a genre. And I feel like people who aren't into it don't like acknowledge that easily. Um, that yeah, there's there it runs the the gamut of of different genres and different things you can do in anime. And I am so excited. For the rock opera one, which I assume is Tatooine Rhapsody, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I am gonna small love chance it. it could be that. I love it now. I love it already. I as soon as uh, that creator said that, I was like, "You have all of my attention. Like this is going to be fascinating." And I really do love that they are. You know, it seems like they've given a lot of creative freedom to to these studios which like you should if you're gonna do anime do it right um and yeah i just I, this is such an interesting project that i wouldn't have seen coming for a, like a very long time so uh this is gonna be dope i have seen a little bit of pushback because when um on i, I think it was on one of the the stories announcing it that they stated that this is not going to be tied to continuity that they're allowing the the um, creators to kind of do what they want. I, I don't know if any of the movie characters are in any of these. Like, it could be just its own thing. But I did see Leland Chi on probably Instagram, who is one of the story group members and really uh, one of the driving forces of continuity. Uh, he had stated that although they are not being tied to continuity, they he is going to count them as... Um, part of continuity as far that's how I'm reading what his comment was right, um, right. and but they it really doesn't become part of continuity until it's referenced elsewhere and sure. so it's it's kind of its own thing and really they can they can do whatever they want but uh, I'll count it as part of the story unless it's directly conflicting with other stuff well um, so t- two things on each of your points there on continuity um one of these shorts is going to tie into the upcoming novel Ronin, which is oh. a uh, from Emma uh, Miko Kandon, which is coming from um, Del Rey on October 12th this year. Hmm. So, I mean, there you go. It's being referenced elsewhere. So I, if not all, I think at least some of this will officially be canon. Yeah, we had talked about that one. I was I was excited for that one because that sounds like something that would be up my wheelhouse. I like the samurai style of storytelling. Yeah, and Star Wars is kind of you know just a little bit influenced from that. Oh yeah, it's very adjacent. Um the the episode of the Mandalorian with uh, Ahsoka dueling um, Thrawn's commander. I f- I forget the character's name in this moment, but. She had the the Beskar uh, spear, and they, and they were dueling like you know with the 
the plants and the water and like the standoff and right outside on the other side of the door, Mando and the dude from uh, Alien and Terminator, Michael Bean, uh, were having their like Western style standoff. I love that episode because it's such a like perfect look of two of the strongest influences on Star Wars and they're happening like there's a just a, a door in between the two of them and it's so cool. Um, but yeah, Nicole, I, I, I am totally with you on like giving somebody else the reins. Like I confirmed it is all Japanese animation studios. So like we're getting an entire, like a brand new perspective from a totally different culture. Who's never taken the reins before on star Wars. And I think that's so cool and something that I hope they do more of. Yeah, I agree. All right. You guys ready to move on here? Sure. Uh, Nicole, I think you should actually take the reins here because this was your idea to help celebrate uh, Independence yeah, sure. Day. This is yeah, Nicole's yeah. Uh, first foray into introducing a conversation topic. God help me. Um, <laughs> yeah. So because um, it's uh, July 4th and, you know, we're American and we can't not talk about it, um, I kind of wanted to look at revolution through a star wars lens like what that looks like as a theme through star wars because if star wars has a theme this is this is kind of the through line is a uh, revolution and resistance and rebellion and you know obviously you could look at the rebellion and the resistance as chief you know examples of that but there are so many revolutionary bodies in star wars throughout canon and like we just put together a list of those you know organizations and we're gonna chat through them and kind of the similarities and the differences and the tactics and the key people and and how you know i think especially as americans we hear revolution or rebellion and we think oh the good guys because like that's kind of where we came from but not always so we kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit as well um that the rebellion the resistance those are not the only revolutionary bodies in star wars we kind of run the gamut right so the list kind of goes with starts with the separatists um then we're looking at emphasis nest and the cloud riders saw Gerrera and and his team then the rebel alliance and then we have the first order and maybe the knights of ren i just added those as well um uh kind of going hand in hand and then the resistance what am i missing guys I think you got everybody. Um, I, I found it funny when you brought this up initially. I we we started a debate instantly on yeah. what what qualifies as a um, like a, a rebellion, a revolutionary uh, organization. Is it? It's clearly not only the quote what we would call the good guys, right. and that's why I brought up the first order because the first order wasn't in charge when they first came around and so like would it they qualify as a revolutionary body in the same vein as the rebellion but they don't have the same ideals that we would um consider between the two groups and so i thought that they were interesting kind of as a counterpoint of not everybody has the not everybody's the good guys right right and you know not to get too political but we've seen that firsthand in the last couple years in america we've seen some crazy hacks of quote-unquote rebellion that um are questionable let's put it that way um yeah some good and some bad we've seen both sides of it in the last few years here i think um but that might just be my perspective and again we don't need to get into that but i thought it was a very interesting um take and i think the the only reason i really pushed back even for a moment on the First Order, and we could get into it now, that's fine, is I feel like the history of how the First Order came to be and and what kind of happens between, you know, the destruction of the second Death Star and the beginning of The Force Awakens, it feels muddy to me. But, like, guys, am I missing something? Like, what? I just don't understand the timeline, I think, between those two events, and maybe there's books I haven't read or other canon stuff that i didn't i didn't wrap my brain around but like what what happened there let's talk about that so there's one pivotal book to that you would need to read to understand it's called bloodline gotcha. um it's claudia it's claudia gray so 
she is great. And so it, it it's probably my least favorite of her books, but that's just ranking books and like she's it's still a great book. Um basically it takes place eight years before um the Phantom not Phantom Menace, uh the Force Awakens, the other one. Um and it's kind of where does the the first order come from and kind of how does it where does the resistance start and everything there and um, kind of all of that in a package because right now most of the canon is set you're right the immediately after Return of the Jedi and kind of a, up to a year after that when you have the Battle of Jakku when the Empire is soundly defeated they get kicked off you have the Mandalorian take place a couple of years later where you have these remnants of the Empire that we don't understand yet because we haven't been told um, and then you have nothing you have muddiness and so like you said it's it is muddy there's nothing much out there um at some point the for the first order comes back that's where you had the bloodlines and then again more muddiness uh, until the really the resistance cartoon ish and all the stuff leading up to the force awakens where we have the republic republic is clearly in charge the first order is trying to come in and kind of hone in on their territory and then they do something and the republic's gone i don't remember it's um yeah, that's a, they blow up some planets, I think. Sure, as you do in Star Wars. You just blow up planets. That's what we do. And then you take Jesus over. It's and easy. that's it. Yeah. That's it. You say, look what I can do. I'm in charge now. And then everyone goes, okay. And then we move on. And then there's another rebellion. And that's kind of what Star Wars likes to do. So, okay, cool. That totally makes sense. Um, what do we want to do, guys? Do we want to kind of go in, in chronological order and talk about these a little bit? Or what do you guys want to do? Um, it's, it's your game show, buddy. It's, um, it's my, it's my show. Uh, love that. Okay. So let's, let's first talk about the separatists because I am so, maybe I'm, it's the Phantom Menace fangirl in me, but man, the separatists are interesting to me. And again, like I have not finished the Clone Wars yet, so there's probably some stuff I don't. But, but you watched probably the most um, prevalent uh, episodes to it. You have only not watched season six and seven, right? Correct. I'm almost at the end of five. Okay, so you've probably watched the most important um, episodes yeah. to to this are in uh, in before six. I don't even cool. remember six because it was released not really great. quick. And no, it was on Netflix, <laughs> and so you right. binge watched it, and I don't remember almost nothing that happens. Gotcha. Um, Well, what I think is interesting about the Separatists is, you know, from our perspective in the prequels and in the Clone Wars, they're the bad guys the whole time. And then all of a sudden it kind of switches. At the end of episode three, you kind of realize, I think it's Padme who says it perfectly when she says, what if the, you know, the democracy that we're trying to save has been, I'm paraphrasing, but it's been dead the whole time. Like, what if it's gone? What if it's already gone because of all this corruption this that and the other thing and the idea would be that the separatists have seen that from the beginning but um y'all you got the same leader on both sides of it so really what it's a contrived manufactured rebellion but then you have a lot of characters in the clone wars who you know are i would say sincere in their you know beliefs in their you know desire to kind of just separate from the republic that they can see is corrupt and obviously it is and we see that from the jump in the prequels that you know palpatine has a plan and it's working you know what i mean um i just find that whole kind of both sides of the coin thing with the separatists very interesting they even um on episode three they even stated um right in the opening crawl it says there's heroes on both sides and that's kind of what they get into in the Clone Wars, but you don't see it in the movie at all. Yeah, uh, I, I don't see the Separatists as revolutionaries so much, um, but there are people uh, within that faction that are earnest and that uh, and, I, and correct in thinking that the Republic does not function how it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could argue there's a lot of parallels from that to you know, what we're dealing with right now. Um, but, uh, you know, so I, I do see those people that are like, you know, something something happened that shouldn't have, and it either impacted me or something I care about 
and I want you, the government, to address this and fix this. And we see this with Naboo firsthand. And they're like, oh, yeah, um, blatant corruption in front of your face, committees, uh, money, bureaucrats, no solution for you. Have a great day. So there's those people. And then there's the techno union and the um, trade federation who are like, we just want to do business the way we want to do business without having anyone, any governing body uh, that we don't agree with telling us that we can't do X, Y, and Z. So we're going to make our own government. You guys can do your own thing, have a great day. Uh, and without the influence of uh, Sidious and Count Dooku to push towards war, it just seemed like they were pretty cool with just being like, all right, we're just going to go do our own thing here and yep. like have you know the purest form of capitalism, which is kind of where a lot of these disagreements came from. Um, so yeah, th- there's like a lot of layers to the separatists, uh, and there definitely are people that are correct, like you said, like when Padme's kind of like, uh, I mean, are they so wrong? Yeah, yeah, you see that a lot in the Clone Wars. Padme, like, whether she's talking to friends of hers who are other diplomats and you know, whatever, and she's just like, maybe they got a point. Like, Padme's the one to figure it out first, which I always point to, which is a different topic that she's a brilliant character because she figures it out before anybody else does. Um, But yeah, you kind of see her get there in the Clone Wars, which is so interesting. But yeah, there's, there's definitely, like you said, a lot of layers to the separatists and, you know, yeah, clearly without Sidious's influence, it would have been different and probably extremely peaceful um, and not so much a rebellion or revolution as just like, I'm going to go over there. Goodbye. Um, the question is whether whether the you know the republic would have let that happen. This brings, it feels like no. Yeah, it sounds like um, it, it, what JJ was saying too is it, it it brings up a question: is are these revolutionaries? Are these um, people like what is the difference between a revolution and what's going on in the Clone Wars? Because the Clone Wars feels right. like a civil war sort of thing where you have mm-hmm. half the the factions want something different so they're leaving versus a revolution which is trying to change the style of government that's in power sure. and it's kind of kind of a mix where you did get a change of government that was in power but not exactly like who was the revolutionary in that who wanted the change in power in government so was palpatine the revolutionary because he wanted the change in, in government and uh he he enacted his own uh his own changes there. I, I'm I, I'm stating that Palpatine's the revol- original revolutionary. I, kinda... I mean, yeah, from a certain point of view. Hi, um, yeah, <laughs> I think I think so. I think you could definitely say that. And he manufactured an entire movement around his own desires and needs. It's like the worst motivation you could possibly have in this kind of situation is. Yeah, this is just what I want for this suits my needs. And that's it. You know, it's fascinating. Um, But yeah, and then we have Enfys Nest and the Cloud Riders, which, you know, we talked about them a little bit last week in our solo discussion. Um, But they kind of quietly start the Rebel Alliance, right? Like, that's kind of what I got from, from Solo is that with, you know, the you know the uh, oh my god what they got from the Kessel Run coaxium. what were they doing yeah with that coaxium they start a rebellion I don't know? know if they start it at least they fund it um, right yeah. they they hint at that that like this is going to spark a rebellion you well, know like the, which the, is dope the thing with the Rebel Alliance. Um, is and i think that rebels did a great job illustrating this um the galaxy and the empire is so large that like there's a lot of people off the bat who are like i'm not cool with this and obviously Mm. to to varying degrees and we get these cells kind of forming independently of one another and then you know people like mon mothma and uh, a lot of the mon cals and the cloud riders and um senator organa and his people they're they're like pulled in together uh you know uh harrison doula and the crew crew of the ghost um so it's it's interesting because 
I could be wrong, but I don't think we've ever really been shown where the Cloud Riders and the Emphis Nest group, uh, excuse me, and Emphis Nest um, fall into that, like, are they their, their own cell that just eventually joins the Rebel Alliance, or are they the group that funds it and helps say to these people, no, we do have the funds to buy ships and supplies, like, I don't think we really know yet, um, but so, that's... So- Go ahead. In the in the novelization for um, Solo, we see where she brings the money, mm. and she brings it to Saw. Mm. That's interesting. And so we actually get to see a three year old uh, Jin is also um, there because it takes a, a the it takes place a few years after the beginning the beginning parts of rogue one and so we we kind of know it's like clearly not on screen so it's not official but we do know at least according to the novelization where that money was going yeah and that that leads us perfectly into saw Gerrera and his group which the name of it i always forget someone i believe it's the partisans okay now they start out in the clone wars and we see them in bad batch as well as like a kind of extremist group, like kind of, but like not really. And also Saw's not in charge in the beginning. His sister is. And it's it's interesting that they were always kind of a little extremist. And then by the time we get to Rogue One, he's just seen as kind of a, a kook. You know, like that dude is... He's off the deep end. Like he's doing some he's stuff. He's essentially that... a he's essentially a terrorist by that. Right. Point. He's 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 a war criminal and a terrorist. And how the heck does that happen? I mean, we've seen it kind of, you know, losing you everyone you care about. Ha- yeah, that'll do <laughs> having it, your right? home destroyed, having that'll your limbs blown off. Um but yeah, th- there's definitely a very clear distinction between the Rebel Alliance and Saw. One is I just want to destroy the empire and the other is we want to remove the Empire and build something better. Saw doesn't right. care about building something better. He just wants to make the Empire suffer. And I think right. that's the clear, very uh, obvious difference between those two groups. Um, I don't want to reference you know, too much real-life stuff here and get political, but um, that's how I see those. Yeah, it's, it's the difference between a rebel or a revolutionary and an anarchist. Right, like Saw Gerrera just wants to burn it down, and that's it. At least from my understanding. Um, whereas you know, the the Rebel Alliance is a little, like you said, a little bit more like, yeah, let's let's just remove them from power. Maybe they don't all have to die, dude. Like everyone, calm down, and then let's you know put other people in power who are maybe uh, better. You know, um, I'm, but I'm- yeah, I feel like we're missing a lot of Saw's life in the middle and like what his relationship to the rebel alliance was well that's and, i know, think where we're going to get an andor because he has been confirmed to be an andor or uh right. forrest whitaker has so uh um i i imagine we'll get more there and it's interesting you um the the end goals of these uh groups is paramount to what what they're doing because you're right saw is more of an anarchist, really just wants to destroy the government in power, really hates it, hasn't thought beyond what is the end goal of getting these out of power, whereas the rebellion slowly over time kind of realizes that once they win, what is going to happen? How do you rule? And uh, I, in, um, I'm in, i reading the last Alphabet Squadron book right now, and um, Hera is in it a lot. Oh, awesome. And- I have to pick that up. And she has a, I believe it's in this book. Um, she has this line that said, rebellions are built on hope, but like governments are like a lot harder to do. <laughs> like you, yeah. like you can, like you can put together a rebellion, but like government, you're like completely out of a fish out of water trying to make sure yeah. that everything uh, works right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, it's like in Hamilton, winning is easy, young man, governing's harder. Like that, that's pretty much the same sentiment, isn't it? Exactly. But- yes. Um, we've, we've mentioned, you know, rebels and anarchists. I would see Saw as a a rebel and a revolutionary that became an, like a terrorist and an anarchist, but there's something else on this list that I see them together and I don't think they belong together. The first order and the Knights of Ren from the start, the Knights of Ren were anarchists. 
And I yeah, don't think yeah. they ever were anything other than that. The First Order were, I see as, they weren't rebelling. They were just trying to conquer. Because um, it was a brand new military organization. But the Knights of Ren from the start, if you read the Rise of Kylo Ren from Charles Sewell and... Um, ugh, Will have, Sliney. Yes, Will Sliney who we've had on the show and is a wonderful person and a really great artist. Um, you see that from the start, the Knights of Ren are just like, we like to go around the galaxy and kill people and take whatever we want. And mm. uh, we touch the dark side and don't really understand it. Uh, and that's really their MO. They don't care about conquering. They don't care about getting it's rid of the new Republic. Card. They really just are like, yeah, we like to kill people and take things, and that's it. <laughs> so yeah. they are, for me on this list, the pure anarchists. Yeah, you're totally right. At least I think so. It's on their business card. We just like to kill people and uh, burn things. <laughs> we just things. like to ruin it. We <laughs> just like to ruin it. Um, so yeah, let's talk about, obviously, the big ones, the Rebel Alliance and the Resistance, which are pretty much... The same damn thing. Like um, run by the same person. Literally. They were like, let's take all the leadership that's left alive from the rebellion and do the resistance. Let's just do it again. Let's just rebrand. Let's go. And, you know, I feel like the difference between the two, I made a joke on TikTok. Yes, leave me alone. Um, but there was a sound going around that was like, in terms of money, we have no money. And I was I just used that and I was like, this is the resistance the whole time. They just have no funding. And what they have, they lose all the time. They're just always running on empty. Whereas the rebellion is like backed by clearly a lot of money because resources don't seem to be a problem for the rebellion. Like, am I wrong? But like they just they're funded by like royalty, it feels like. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think it's a. You haven't watched Rebels yet, right? Not yet, not yet. Definitely, it's probably still my favorite show. Um, they they do go a lot into kind of where the the stuff comes from, and funding is not their issue. Their main yeah. issue is the Empire and like shutting things down, and so they are able to get anything they need as long as they can get around the Empire. Um, between basically blocking blocking it, so. You're right. I, I definitely see the rebellion has has the money. They just don't have the supply lines, and the resistance has nothing. It has the people. Yeah, and it's interesting because typically the people who are rebelling against typically against an unjust gof- government are the have nots. Typically, that's what we see in a lot of revolutions: is the have nots trying to you know overthrow have. the the haves. <laughs> You know, so the it's kind of interesting. Want the have what the haves yep. have, and uh, that's yeah, that's basically yep. it. <laughs> it's I mean, you could look at the French Revolution and see that very clearly. You know, that's literally <laughs> Let what them it eat is. Cake. Let them eat cake. Um, but yeah, I feel like the resistance was kind of, in a way, a bit of a more realistic version of a rebellion because they're like constantly about to lose everything and their hopes are on like one ship and they're like we've got 10 people oops like it's it's really interesting um but yeah i think that's that's the biggest difference between the two you know is you know they're in pretty much the same situation it's you know the the spawn of the empire versus the spawn of the rebels and that's what we're dealing with um but maybe i'm missing something what do we think I don't know. I struggle with this, with the resistance. Um, It's hard for me to dig into them without getting in the weeds of what I feel like is, uh, I don't know, just storytelling that I don't necessarily agree with or understand. Like when the resistance is being built, it's like, how is the new Republic already so broken that the resistance even has to exist? Um, I guess I take issue with that. And then uh, once it does happen and, you know, Hosni and Prime and everything is gone, you know, we have all these vets. So, like, how are you guys as bad at this <laughs> as you are? Um, and, like, I get it. Like, the galaxy has fatigue and people are tired of it. But still, it's like we know that the entire New, Le- New Republic military wasn't at Hosni and Prime. Most of the fleet was, but not all of it. 
like gather these elements get our old allies the fact that like everyone just ignored them it was like no nah, we're just gonna let this fascist government take over it's fine i just it's really difficult for me to to get around that um well kind of relating it to modern day politics uh, i know we didn't want to do that too much but it it does kind of play in and that um the it, it, you, you can look at the extreme difference in opinions in our modern day congress like where people are on both ends of the spectrum and that's really kind of how they explained where the resistance came from because you had this group of people that were on our political right would not stand up to the first order you had people on our political left who wanted to stand up for the first order but basically they the congress was in gridlock and the resistance was formed as a underground non-sanctioned part of the the government that would actually stand up against these people because nobody else would and that's I guess that's where my sticking point is with this, because the New Republic is the formation of the Empire's horrible. We need a new government and we need to you know make sure we don't repeat the mistakes of the past that led to the Empire. And then it's like a year later. Oh, there's Empire 2.0. Like, it was th- it, but it's 30 years later. Y- you know what I'm saying? In, in galactic terms, it's like not long <laughs> later it's like oh there is what just happened uh but it's fine (laughs) but like looking at real life we're getting a lot of people rising up with nazi flags that wasn't that long ago like that was like same amount of time in our own history and you get the same people like same people pulling the same stuff going like maybe it wasn't so bad like yes it was we had a whole war about it i don't see now i'm getting legitimately depressed because you're getting way too real for me (laughs) sorry sorry um and then the ewoks defeated them all oh that's better that's better (laughs) good 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 good. um no i think it brings up a point that you know is often contentious in the the star wars fandom which you know what isn't um but it's this idea that if rebellion is a constant theme if this is the through line through star wars it is inherently political and i think that people (laughs) like people really want to ignore that and do the whole keep your politics out of my star wars and it's like it is inherently in its bones political commentary because of everything we have just said we literally can't talk about it without bringing our real politics into it we can't do it well you know the original star wars was written as a anti-Vietnam war where exactly. he couldn't talk about Vietnam and mm-hmm. the evil empire was America. In that's that us. Instance. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like if you. So happy bring... Fourth of July, everybody. So happy... <laughs> that's it. Good night. Uh, if you don't no. want to bring politics into Star Wars, you clearly haven't been paying attention to what Star Wars is and what it's based exactly. on. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's that's kind of the sneaky freaking point i was trying to make with all of this is like hey let's not bring politics into it except we can't we literally couldn't do it which i find very interesting so we're smart people we can have nuanced conversations but guess what it's all related to what we're actually experiencing and i find that very interesting um but i kind of wanted to wrap up with this question kind of to the group if you were in the star wars universe would you have joined any of these groups? And if so, which? What would you have gotten on board with? Knights of Ren. <laughs> JJ, uh, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> as um, as fun as it would be, I think if this was me personally, I'm a pacifist. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. like I don't like to fight. Like regardless of the oh, I'd love to be a Sith. Like I, I don't like to fight. I don't like to hurt other people. I don't like to see other people die, regardless of what their their viewpoints are or where they are on any spectrum. And so I would be one of those like kind of hiding out on a planet all by myself or with my family, saying yeah, let's kind of wait this one out. I would be um uh oh, what's his name uh um cut. I, I would mm. be like uh just 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 leave me alone just want to be want to be on a planet by myself yeah i think that's fair yeah like i would love to say like oh i definitely join like 
the resistance or the rebellion. But the truth is only if I didn't have to see combat. Like if I could be somewhere organizing stuff or, you know, whatever, I would do it in a heartbeat. I would definitely support those movements. But would I have joined them? I don't know if I would have had the stones to do that. I think I would have needed like the reassurance, like you're not going to be in an X-Wing, you're fine. You know, (laughs) like that's what I would have probably needed because I am a coward by nature. Um, So I feel like I definitely would have supported them, but joined them, I don't know. Um, I think it's very hard to say what you wouldn't, would and wouldn't do um, depending on, you know, what is your situation like when you're asking that question? Are you someone who has a nice, comfortable life that isn't impacted by what's happening? Um, Did you lose someone close to you because of what's happening? Did you lose your livelihood? Uh, Are you going to lose it? Like, there's so many factors that I feel like influence that. And, you know, Nicole, like, your resolve could be completely different depending on, like, if you're in that universe and depending on like what happened to you and how these different groups and their choices impacted your life and the people you care about, I, f- you know, I, and I feel like yeah. that's why we see certain things happening today and throughout history. It's all relative. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right, my friend. All right. Let's go, uh, light some sparklers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Unless you're in the West, don't light anything on fire. Don't, uh, don't do it's, that. It's, it's, yeah, sparklers are cool because you hold them in your hand and they don't launch into the woods and start forest fires. So uh, be safe, kids. Listen to Smokey. Only you can prevent <laughs> forest fires. All that good stuff. But even so, have fun. Yes, have fun. You'll have had fun by the time you're listening to this. So <laughs> exactly. hope, you, <laughs> hope, hope you had fun. Uh, I don't know what we're going to talk about next week. Do you guys? Are we going to do some comics finally? Should we catch up with some comics? Sure. We can, we can definitely. Um, I right. still uh, have to actually get the comics. Uh, I, I signed too. up with I signed up with a local comic book shop that Yay. is um, as bare bones comic book shop as you can get. It's, oh, uh, man. You so, can change the, that, Jim. You and your wallet. Yeah, they are. But they are the definition of small business. And so I, I, I gladly will support the local small businesses. But like I said, I live in the middle of nowhere. It takes me 30 minutes to get to anything. Grocery store, Home Depot, anything 30 minutes away. Well, maybe we'll do comics. Maybe we won't. I don't we'll know. But we'll out. be back next week. In the meantime, thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show today. We hope you have a safe and happy 4th of July. Uh, as we said at the top of the show, find us on Twitter at Talking Tauntauns. Shoot us an email talking tauntauns at aiptcomics.com that's gonna do it we're gonna get out of here we'll see you guys next time and thanks for listening